When I first started making these videos, the intention was to make them at least semi-regularly, instead of making them in real time. I've had a huge influx of views lately, so maybe I'll make these more often. Maybe. Oh well. Anyway. Thanks to the reliability of his Napier, Selwyn Edge won the 1902 Gordon Bennett Cup for the British Empire, embarrassing the French automotive giants, and Britain would get to host the Cup for 1903. Like and subscribe, if you wish. This is Mostly Racing, I'm Nick, and let's go. So, Britain won the right to hold the race. Road racing was illegal at the time. Not as much as a problem as you'd expect, as there were plenty of places where Britain could be the hosts. Are we the baddies? That being said, the Automobile Club of Great Britain and Ireland, now the RAC, were determined to hold the race in the UK. The secretary of the organisation, Claude Johnson, was the one who suggested Ireland could be the hosts, as the road racing rules were slightly more lenient than in Britain. By the way, if you're unfamiliar with the UK political situation of the early 20th century, the UK stood for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, meaning that the two islands were the same country at the time. The current meaning of the UK, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, only came into effect in 1922, following the Irish Free State Constitution Act. Anyway, with Ireland chosen as the hosts, the Dublin Motor News editor, Richard McCready, who is credited as the inventor of cycle polo, suggested an area in County Kildare would be appropriate. In an attempt to try and change the law to let the race happen and build hype, letters were sent to, you're ready for this, 102 Irish MPs, 90 Irish peers, 300 newspapers, 34 chairmen of county and local councils, 34 county secretaries, 26 mayors, 41 railway companies, 460 hoteliers, and the Bishop of Kildare who was apparently well up for it. On the 27th of March 1903, the Light Locomotives Bill, Ireland, was passed, which allowed road racing on the island of Ireland. With the race green lit in the Emerald Isle, a route needed to be decided. With safety in mind for a change, it was agreed that the race would take place on closed roads, and consist of laps, rather than one destination to another. The route was made up of two separate circuits, which made up a figure of eight. The first circuit was 84 kilometres, and went through the poorly pronounced towns of Kilcullen, the Curra, Kildare, Monastrevin, Stradbally, and Athy, and the second was 64 kilometres and went through the equally poorly pronounced Castle Dermot, Carlow, and back to Athy. Again, with safety in mind, these towns would represent control zones, which were essentially virtual safety car zones. Well, not so much virtual safety car, where cars are restricted to a time delta, but rather the cars had to slow down and follow a very real man on a very real bicycle. That's the route sorted, but you can't have a race without teams or drivers. There were four nation teams of three drivers, making a field of 12, record number of entries for the cup up to that point. Playing fast and loose with the rules, the Germans consisted of two Belgians and an American. Camille Ginazzi, competitor in the first Gordon Bennett Cup, Baron Pierre Descartes, the first Belgian to fly an aircraft, and Foxall Parker Keen, who probably deserves a video of his own. I shall list some of the strange facts and trivia of his life on screen and I'll keep talking so you can have a good read of them, and that's probably long enough. The Germans raced in white 90 horsepower Mercedes. Well, that was the plan anyway. Three weeks before the race, there was a fire at the Cannstatt factory, and said 90 horsepower Mercedes was destroyed. The drivers were provided with 60 horsepower Mercedes instead, which factory management had to rebuy as they had already sold them. So much for German efficiency. For the French, we have some familiar names. René Deneuf, in his third cup race, Henry Farman, and Fernand Gabriel, who was the winner of the Paris-Madrid race. Deneuf and Farman were in 80 horsepower panards, while Gabriel drove the same 70 horsepower mauds which he had used in the tragic race. The French, of course, drove in blue. Murica. The most notable driver was Alexander Winton, who founded the Winton Motor Carriage Company. Naturally, he and Percy Owens, the manager of said Winton Motor Carriage Company, raced in Winton's own machines, while the third member of the team, Louis Moores, drove a 80 horsepower machine by the Peerless Car Company. Can't find anything on Louis Moore online. Closest I can find is a Lou Moore, who was the 1932 Indy 500 pole winner. So, never mind. With white and blue already taken, the Americans went for red. Finally, the defending champions, the British, who were represented by Selwyn Edge, Charles Jarrett, and J.W. Stocks. Now, I need to give a big thanks to a Mr. Mark Hancock, who commented on my last Gordon Bennett's Cup video. 
Your man Mark is, or was by the time this comes out, the Annerly Bicycle Club captain, and he informs us these three were all members of said bicycle club. That's a cracking factual nugget. Shows that even these pioneering drivers were speed obsessed athletes. For the most part, anyway. All three drove Napiers. Jarrett and Stocks were in 7.7 litre, 45 horsepower machines, while Edge drove a 13.72 litre, 80 horsepower monster. Now, what about colour? The Union flag is made up of three colours, all of which had been taken by the other nations. So, as this race was in Ireland, the cars were painted in shamrock green. British cars would continue to race in this colour, so it was renamed British Racing Green. The national racing colour remains to this day, as seen with the Aston Martin F1 team. Other examples include the poorly run Jaguar F1 team from the early 2000s, the Bentley Speed 8, and this bottle of body spray that I have. And now the race. Selwyn Edge, the champion of the cup, was the first to set off at 7am on the 2nd of July, and was followed by the rest of the drivers in rally stage intervals. Because who wants to see cars race against each other on track? Genuinely, the race organisers did not want to see the cars anywhere near each other. On the first lap, Stocks was forced to retire his car after he crashed into a wire fence, while the American representing Germany, Foxall Keen, was the early leader after lap 1. More pain for the hosts on lap 2, as Jarrett's steering failed, and Edge's tyres kept coming off the rims, and all chances of defending the cup went out the window. Our mystery man Louis Mors also DNF'd, due to his engine overheating, and Genazzi of Germany was now the fastest. Lap 3, and Keane's car wasn't too keen to go the full distance, as he dropped out with mechanical problems. Genazzi again was fastest, and would be fastest for the remaining laps. He ended up winning the race by 11 minutes and 40 seconds from Deneuf. Third was Farman, and fourth Gabriel. Edge was fifth and the final runner, but was disqualified for outside assistance. I've looked at a few sources, not just Wikipedia this time, and I couldn't find any info on what form this outside assistance took, but I'm going to make the assumption it was related to his rim problem. So, with that, Germany became the third nation to win the cup, and this was undoubtedly Camille Genazzi's finest moment, along with his land speed records. His least finest moment would come ten years later on a hunting trip, when, as a joke, he hid behind a bush and started making animal noises. On a hunting trip. So one of his friends shot and killed him. What a roller coaster it was researching this race. I would go into more detail about the race itself, but sadly, that information just doesn't exist anymore. So, anyway, the 1904 and penultimate Gordon Bennett Cup race would be held in Germany, and let's hope it doesn't take me another year to get round to it. Thanks for watching.